everyone. No matter if you're coming for the first time to visit my channel or if you're a subscriber, I want you to know how much I appreciate you being here today. I know your time is important. If the video runs long, just save it and come back and watch it in pieces. Hey, I um, also want you to know that whatever we have in this video featured, we have links posted to our Amazon account and uh, you can go there directly and order and if you do, it will cost you nothing extra but our channel will make a small commission and we sure do appreciate that guys because it helps us find new items to test and review. On that note, the items that I test and review are purchased with my own money. Our channel is not sponsored by anybody related to any of the items that we review and test. So, and if for some reason someone sends us something to test and review, we'll let you know. Just beneath the video, there's a section that says more. This is where you find all of our links, and we just added a Amazon wish list. So, if there's something in there you'd like to see us test and review, um, <laughs> you can send us a gift, folks. Not required, but anyway. Uh, so let's get back to the video. I'm trying to make sure you guys get my honest opinion on everything the channel covers. Also, if you leave a comment or ask a question, we'll do our best to answer. Uh, your thoughts are important to us, and we appreciate everyone who makes a comment. And please consider liking the channel subscribing ringing the bell when you subscribe so you know when we post new video and giving us a thumbs up god bless y'all and let's start the video hey guys today i'm going to be reviewing this campbell's chunky soup that eats like a meal it's got 16 grams of protein per per can and it's a creamy chicken and dumplings variety it has 170 calories per serving Serving size one cup, saturated fat 13%, these are daily allowances, uh, trans fat zero, cholesterol 12%, uh, sodium 39%, total carbs 5%, dietary fiber 4%, and added sugars 0% and protein 14%. Get a close look at that now I'm going to do uh, this review with a, tris, a twist um, this hypothetically is an emergency meal um, I'm going to be doing some reviews on some nice emergency meals that can be prepared uh, off-grid and uh, I would like to have a variety of things so I don't get food fatigue. I just went through Hurricane uh, Barrel. I was pretty well prepared except for my food. So I'm working on my uh, food stash, uh, food supplies, and uh, I've got a pretty good idea now that I should have probably about two weeks of a variety of food on hand because we were out of power for four days however the local utility said it might have been up to 14 days so what i'm going to do is i'm going to heat this uh meal in my sandwich uh lunch lunch box warmer and i'm going to plug it into my uh blue ac 70 it's rated at 768 watts, 1,000 watt hours, and I'm going to see it's at 100% how much it drains, and also um, how much this sandwich uh, warmer takes wattage to power. I have used this with my Blue Eddy EB3A, but I've decided in emergencies I'm going to cook with the AC70. So what I'm going to do... I also found, and I'm going to link a previous video, it took me about 30 minutes to heat a meal with this. So I'm going to let this heat for 30 minutes. I'll shut off the video and then I'll come back after 30 minutes. And then I will eat the meal and tell you if I like it. So what I'm going to do, 
and I'm not sure if this is going to work but I'm going to try it I'm, I'm going to use the AC plug this thing does come with a DC plug but I think for efficiency purposes okay I've got it plugged in and right off the bat I can see it's drawing it started it booted up at about almost 300 watts but now it's dropping back down here's the soup I'm gonna pour it directly into the warming tray take a look at that board affair and so now we're gonna heat it for 30 minutes and I shall return in 30 minutes guys I'll see you then okay I forgot to mention uh, the soup on the bottom of the can had a best buy date of November 2026 and we're currently uh, in uh, July of 2024 so it's got a fairly stable shelf life so you can keep some of these cans of soup around if you like them for a while and pull them out in an emergency like this one uh, let's, it's been about if you can see that it's been about 25 minutes uh, but I hear the soup bubbling around in there so I think it's been properly heated up uh, we've only used uh, right now the little heaters only drawn 52 watts and have only used 5% of my uh, blue eddy AC 70 and when I've tested this on my EB3A it's it's a fairly uh, light draw pull on that too so my friends around here at Alders who have bought EB3As um, take a look at the video on this little uh, warming box because you might want to have one of these around to help you heat up something it doesn't take a whole lot of power off of your uh, off of your solar generator so what I am going to do Yeah, you can see it. It's bubbling. That's pretty good. Uh, well, first, let's... Let's see... Uh, putting a food thermometer in here. So this sandwich warmer has heated this soup up to about 140 degrees, which is a good temperature for eating. And it's also, in my opinion, safe to eat. It's the, the contents have been heated sufficiently. Now, let's get into taste testing and reviewing soup shall we that where you can see it it is creamy um, I'm not sure I would call this chunky I'll have to eat it a little bit more but I've had some chunky soups before um, I am going to add crackers, but I want to taste it a little bit before I do because the crackers have more salt and it will change the flavor of the soup. That first bite, again, it's heated properly. I got a little bit of a dumpling and uh, 
it's heated properly it has a good flavor it's not off-putting at all it doesn't taste uh, here's here's a bite with a carrot it doesn't taste uh, I don't taste any artificial like flavors um, yeah you could you could almost consider this homemade um, if if somebody didn't didn't see it coming out of the can um, in an emergency situation in my opinion this would be a pleasant meal I think I have a piece with a dumpling and some chicken yeah I got a dumpling with that one the dumpling I would give it probably an 8 out of 10 uh, it's, it has a little bit of a unusual flavor to it here's another bite Oops, there's my alarm well that wasn't cool um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to deal with that make a mess here Uh, let's get another bite you know one of the things and if it's in here it's not very much one of the things I wish they had in here two of the things three of the things some celery some onions and some peas all I'm seeing there's a nice sized dumpling and I don't really know what a dumpling supposed to look like but to me it looks like they just took wads of dough and threw it in here not that that's necessarily a bad thing there's a pea I'll be darned there's just not enough of them um, That was a pretty good sized dumpling. Um, the ratio of soup to ingredients like the dumplings, the, the vegetables, the chicken. Um, I think they kind of skimped. I also don't think I'll have to look at the can again. I don't know if they call them this chunky soup, but I just don't, uh, I don't see it as being chunky. It's not a bad soup. It just, there's usually a noticeable difference between the regular Campbell soups and the chunky soups. You know, overall, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, say this is a bad soup because it's not bad it, tastes, it has a good taste to it um, if I had to rate it on a scale of um, 1 to 10 I'd probably give it a 7.5 um, will I will I buy some more of this to put into my uh, <clears throat> emergency food supply or to keep in my pantry? Here go the crackers. I kind of doubt it. I think there's other um, soups that I will like better. I've never been a big dumpling person. Excuse me. Just to give you my bias on that. Maybe these crackers will help thicken it up a little bit. I'm just going to need a few more crackers. I like soup with my crackers, folks. I won't lie. 
but again, you know, if you're in an emergency situation, you can store, we have a cracker, uh, uh, tin box that will fit four sleeves of crackers. This looks pretty old. I don't know if you can still get them, but you might find one on eBay, and it kind of helps keep your crackers fresh um, and makes it better to store in your pantry. Oh, this is a spoon that came with my uh, heated lunch kit. And also, by the way, um, this is my lunch. And, um, I'm not going to be disappointed that I ate it for lunch because it's filling me up. I don't eat as much as I used to. But I was kind of hungry when I sat down to eat this meal. Um, you know, when you talk about emergency food supply like there's companies out there that are um, they're selling it like four patriots is the first one that comes to mind and they're touting that their food lasts for 25 years it has a lot to do with the material they use to package it. It also has a lot to do with the temperature you can store it at. And realistically, I guess if you're a doomsday prepper and you want to go down into the bunker at some point in time and live there for I don't know how many years. For me personally, I don't see a need for that type of food Number one, you're going to have to lay out a lot of cash um, to get a meaningful supply of it. And I view emergency food as kind of like dollar cost averaging into gold. Um, I don't go out and buy a big chunk of gold at a time I, uh, or silver. I just buy little bits at a time and put it away. And eventually it adds up. So that's how I would do my food storage and I would also before I start planning to store any food I would take a look at where you're going to put it you don't want it on the floor um, you probably want to have some storage boxes that will stack and uh, will stay airtight and keep the bugs out and there's nothing wrong with canned foods uh, for food for emergency food supply if you had a year of uh, food on hand, for most people, that would probably be overkill. Uh, and, unless your home got wiped out. And that's another reason you want to have um, uh, boxes and don't make them too large. Because if you have to evacuate, you want to be able to load a percentage of that food into your car and take it with you. You also want to have a way to cook it on the road, which makes one of these EB3As or an AC70 a really good thing to have in your car along with a lunchbox. And if you watch my channel, I've already shown you some other ways to heat up food like a hot plate. But um, I know this is a Campbell Soup review, but you know, I... I like Campbell soup. I've always eaten it, but usually it's when I'm on a budget. You know, I got this can of soup for, I believe, $2.26, and I used to be able, not long ago, get it for um, right around $1.75. No, I think I, I think I've gotten it at one point for a dollar twenty six because I've always tried to keep some around um, and one last thing I'm going to say is um, you can dollar cost average into this soup like when you go do your grocery shopping 
pick up a can or two and uh, they're easy to store can stack well and uh, you could even slide some under the bed in a plastic box or you know in your closet you don't have to take up pantry space uh, they're probably not going to leak out um, and they're going to be difficult for insects to infiltrate so but as far, the overall opinion of the soup is uh, poor fair uh, good decent good excellent I would rate it as good um, just because it's not necessarily my favorite soup I think some of you who, who like dumplings are used to eating will find this acceptable except it needs more dumplings and it needs more vegetables and it probably needs more chicken and I think everything they're making right now due to this economy they're, they've cut back ingredients to save money but I'm going to sign off now so the video doesn't get too long I appreciate you guys stopping by um, again please uh, subscribe ring the bell so you know when I post new videos like the channel and uh, I'll see you soon with another video. God bless y'all. Have a great day.